All praises, all honor, all glory be unto Yahweh. Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles, elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And peace and salutation to all the Hakim doing and pushing his word in all honesty, truth, and sincerity worldwide. And a sincere shalom to the elect. Now, this is going into uh, his movie, okay? It's going to be directed at, um, you know, where people talk about reincarnation and this and that. And it's not real. It's a, a Hindu thing. It's a heathen thing. And, no, it's, it can be found in the scriptures, okay? Those Yahweh Hashem Yahushai has important understanding too. They understand it. They see it, okay? They read it in the scripture. And we're going to go through, you know, the scriptures here. Um, yeah, we, we, we fully understand it. This is why, you know, these uh, grave punishments, you know, Jake may say, hey, man. Or even, look at it this way. When we're out there on the highways, byways, or you put up these videos, and we're talking about how Esau eat him, you know, what he did before and all this stuff, and then, you know, some little punk-ass Edomite comes up and says, well, it's not right that I should suffer for, uh, you know, I didn't do it, it wasn't me, you know, all of this. You are your forefathers, okay? You are your forefathers coming back. Same with us. I'm going to give a quick scenario on, you know, what the Lord can do according to the scriptures. So let's say you're born in the 1900s, all right? And you got to the age of 14 and you met an older woman. Let's say you met a woman in her 20s. Went to her house. You're working at her house. You got to know her, you know? Her parents lived there. And let's just say she fell fond of you, you know. You're a man at that age, according to the scriptures. So you, you, you tackled it, you know. Got a little, you know, <laughs> something off. Because, hey, you tell me, you 15, 16, you know, and some older older chick approach you, you're tackling that down, okay. So let's just say she was even, let's just say you were, let's just say you were, uh, because I'm trying to deal with certain numbers here. Let's say you were 15, all right? 14, 15. Let's just, actually, no, keep it at 14. She was uh, 18, whatever the fuck, 20, whatever the fuck, okay? Banged it up. Now, all of a sudden, she's pregnant. On your fourth, like, you know, a year later, the baby comes out. And a year later, you die, right? So you died when you were 15. Let's just say it like that, okay? could even say 50 and some change, all right? Now, all of a sudden, your son grows up, and he does the same thing. Catches some older gal. She's like 18, 20, because over here in Canada, is different. It's not like your place over there in America. Over here, when both parties are fucking 16, that's it. They can have a baby, yo. Even from the age of... uh. 14 and up, as long as the parents both consent, or at least there's one consent in period, all right? So let's just say now, she goes and, uh, or he goes, does the same thing like his dad, and dies the same fucking way, and then his son, the same thing as his grandfather, and then the last son, the fourth son now, right, onto the third and fourth generation, he does the same thing. So within 15, 15, let's say 31, 31 and 31, 62 years. After 62 years, you pop up, okay? The Lord can do that because the Lord said on to the third and fourth generation. The Lord doesn't have to keep you here till 90 years, 70 years. Whatever he's written your story, your life story as, that's it. That's what it is. But this is how these Edomites think. They think, that can't be me. I, I That was like only 100 years ago. Well, the Lord could boom, 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 bring you back, bring you back, bring you back quick. Okay, and uh, uh, hey, an hour in the Lord's time, an uh, hour, look, 41 years, point six 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 seven. do the calculations, a thousand years is as a... Uh, uh, one day to the Lord, right? Thousands of years 
thousand years here to man is as a, a one day to the Lord, right? So do the math, all right? That's 41.6666, okay? So now, like I said, the Lord could bring back four generations in an hour of his time, which is like 40-something, actually, Salakia, um, he can bring, well, actually, shit, he could even, you know, but he can bring you back in quick time, within an hour's time, you know, an hour and some change, boom, you back in his time, which here, you already know, you know, like I said, an hour of the Lord's time equals out to 41.666, whatever, right? So the Lord could do whatever he wants. To us, that seemeth like a long, you know, long time. 41 years, this and that. You know, 60 years, you know, 80 years, right? But to the Lord, that's nothing. So this is why people got to be humble. This is why people got to be uh, of that broken and contrite spirit. And he only gave that to 144,000 elect men to be in that type of fashion. Be in that type of attitude. Okay? So let's get into these scriptures here. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 5 and 9. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, thy power, am a jealous power, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And like I said, Lord can bring, bring back those generations real quick. All right. He can make you pop up in the fourth or third. Isn't that something? So it doesn't even exactly have to be a, a, a hour of his time. <laughs> you know, it could be like 40, 46 years, man. Or it's lucky. Like, yeah, an hour of his time, you know. Damn. So anyways, so. What does it say? Is the iniquities, the iniquities, sin stacked upon sin, of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation. That's why you see Esau, Edom goes, that wasn't me. That ain't right. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. Oh, yes, it was you. Okay? Oh, yes, it was. All right? Because in your mind, you say, I shouldn't have to pay for what something happened in the 1800s. That wasn't me. Oh, yes, it was you. All right? You are your forefathers coming back into the flesh, man. And you're going to have to pay for all the wickedness that you have done. This is the things that they don't get and they don't understand. This is why we're going through what we're going through. You know? Uh, Sirach chapter 12, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and, and 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Okay? So we're made of dust. We're made of the earth. Okay? And within our vessel is contained what? A spirit. Okay? And the spirit goes back to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, who made it. Okay? Tobit chapter 13 and verse 2. For he doeth scourge and have mercy. Yeah, he'll have mercy on us in the end. Baruch chapter 4, right? Baruch chapter 4, uh, 25, right? He's going to have mercy on us eventually. But right now, we're going through our um, infirmities. We're going through our, um, our judgment, our punishment, okay? According to Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, okay? According to what Yahweh Hashem Yahushai has dished out for us, according to his movie, okay? He lead it down to hell. And bring up again. Neither is there any that can avoid. And bringeth up again. To be brought up again. You had to be here at one point. Why didn't it say. Um, lead it down to hell for the first time. And lead it up. For the first time. Okay. You got what I'm trying to say. It says bringeth up again. Okay. As if you had visited this, this place once, twice, three times, four times, a hundred times before. And lead it down to hell. This is hell. You know, what is, what is hell? This is the grave. 
the pit. And hell could also be a, 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 a condition, okay? And that's the condition that's been that we're playing out right now. We're in hellish conditions, okay? And on top of that, when you go into the word Sha'awal, Sha'awal, or Sha'awal, Sha'awal, or Sha'awal, right? It's going into uh, uh, the earth, the pit. I wish I had my zon if you know me right now. But even in the Greek, same thing. You know, it's just talking about going into the earth, the ground, okay? Not an actual place you're going to burn, okay? Well, actually, guess what? You, you, you won't, you won't burn all right. You're going to burn those nukes. <laughs> but anyways, going back into this, and bringeth up again, neither is there any that can avoid his hand. Bringeth up again. Bringeth up again. Like, where, where is these people's minds at when they're reading, man? Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 16. And moreover, under the sun, and moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. See? Where your, where your punishment is handed out. Where your judgment is handed out. Where you can be scourged. Where you can be, because you can't do nothing to a, 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 a spirit. It's pure energy. Okay? What can you do to it? You can't do nothing to it. You're going to burn it. But when you put it into these chains of darkness, this flesh, then you can do something to it. Then you can scourge it. Then you can burn it. Then you can afflict it. Okay? Because when you come back here, there is no remembrance of the former things. Right? So, and moreover... I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. Okay? And yeah, hella, hella iniquity is uh, abounding upon this place. Okay? But main point, more underneath, underneath the sun. What is underneath the sun? Us, earth. Okay? The ground, earth, hello, us. And what? The place of judgment. Place of judgment. That don't sound too right. I thought you guys said that God is all loving. Didn't you JC characters say that? You said God is all loving. Why would he throw us to a place of judgment, man? You know? It has to be that we're playing out our role. We're playing out what the Lord wants us to play it out. We're playing, we're pawns in a movie. And it has to be, now guess what? You sinned in your past life. So until Yahweh Shai cracks them clouds, it's going to continue on the way it is so you can pay out your fucking uh, sins. Okay? Pay for your sins. Until, you know, in the movie, the director writes it. Okay? Uh, da, 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 all right? That's when my son's going to turn. That's it. And that's that's what it is, man. So continuing, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 20. All go on to one place. All are of dust. And all turn to dust again. See? So it's talking about a coming, a living, a dying, and then going back. Okay? All go on to one place. What's that one place? We'll get that in Job real quick. We all go on to one place. Meaning the wicked and the righteous. Okay? All are of the dust. Right? Going back into, um, he leads us down to hell. But then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall go, shall return unto God who gave it. Right? So, all go unto one place. All are of the dust. And all turn to dust again. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward? Remember back in Tobit, okay? And bringeth up again. Goeth upward, and the spirit of, of the beast that goeth downward to the earth. Yeah, they, they have the dominion here. They don't die and go to heaven. Like all dogs go to heaven, all that bullshit. 
is bullshit. Don't think for a minute, you know, what these people tell you about. I saw my grandmother in heaven. Her favorite cat was with her, and her dog was running around chewing on a bone. He was happy. He looked great. Delusions, 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 man. Anyways, so continuing. All going to one place. Job chapter 3 and verse 11. Why die I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me? Why did, why did the knees prevent me? Why did the knees prevent me or why the breast that I should suck for now should I have laid still and been quiet I should have I should have slept I should have slept then had I been at rest with kings and counselors of the earth which built desolate places for themselves or with print oh, come on man or with princes that had gold, who filled their houses with silver, or as an untimely birth, I had not been as an infant, which never saw light, going back to, you know, verse 11, there the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary be at rest, there the prisoners rest together, they hear not the voice of the oppressor, the small and the great are there, and the servant is free from his master. See, the weary be at rest. What does it say right now? I'm oh, going back into. Where's another scripture? No. Oh no, I know where it is. Sakia. So going back into this. Sakia. This is what is being um, mentioned here. This is what's being mentioned um, here, okay? When you go back to that heavenly abode, right? When you go back to rest, right? There's no... Um, that's what fell in my eye? God damn. There's no um, fighting. There's nobody poking at each other. They're all at rest. They're all at sleep, Okay? Which proves another thing too. There is no fucking well, what these people would say, hell. Okay, the only hell is here, when you go into the grave, when you go into that earth, and here, as in, for somebody, they're in their heavenly state, and somebody's living in a hellish state. Okay, those are two things that you can guarantee. All right. So, hell doesn't exist how they're telling you it exists. They're trying to tell you that you're going to go to a specific place where after you're dead and your spirit is going to burn there forever. Okay. So going back into this. Why didn't Sam? Uh, why didn't uh, Samuel say to Saul, you're going to hell? Why did he say you and your sons are going to be here with me? Right? First Samuel 28 and 18, because thou obeyest not the voice of Yahweh, neither execute his fierce wrath upon um, Abelic. <sighs> Therefore have the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Yeah, Saul didn't execute judgment on all those Edomites. He's like, well, I got one good Edomite friend. Ah, here's another one too. You know, like that, that was his attitude, right? And the Lord said, yeah, the prophets ain't going to talk to you. You ain't going to get no visions. You ain't going to get nothing. So he went to go and inquire of a, um, you know, of a witch, right? And this is why it says, therefore, have the Lord done this thing unto thee, right, this day. We're phrasing. Moreover, Yahweh will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of of the Philistine, and tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. Yahweh also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Now, why is his sons? What did Jonathan do, yo? He was, he was 
King David's homeboy, man. Okay? Remember going back to Deuteronomy 5 and 9. Right? But no. The Lord said that he would judge every man according to his own workings, according to his own doings. We're going to get that right now. Okay? So when you read in Deuteronomy 5 and 9 where it tells you that visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the sons, the Lord knoweth your iniquities. When you pass away and you, you know, uh, uh, pop up in another generation, another time, you were your forefather. The, the line came through you, right? And you pop up in another generation. You are your forefathers that once lived before. Our forefather, okay? In which lived before. But now you're here back, and the Lord remembers your iniquity and puts it upon you. Whatever happens in that life happens in that life. So in this case here, Saul's sons, the Lord found it fit, to judge his sons and him at the same time. He said, yeah, I'm going to put it. You remember, he's an author. He said, yeah, I'm going to put it together like this. You know, Jonathan, I remember way back before you were Jonathan, you know, you did this in this past life. Your brother did this in his past life, so on and so forth. Oh, Saul did this in his past life. So he said, you know what? I'm going to judge them all when I make him King Saul. You know, over over Israel. And along with, with these uh, sons of his. Okay? Because I know their iniquities too. You get it? So, why didn't he say to him here, you're going to hell? Why didn't he tell him he's going to hell? Why did he say you're going to be here with me tomorrow, man? Okay? It says, and, and tomorrow... Shall thou and thy sons be with me? <laughs> Come on, man. What hell? What hell are you talking about? So anyways, going back into this. So, just what I was speaking, Deuteronomy 28, uh, 24 and, 8 and 16. The father shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the father's. Every man should be put to death for his own sin. So going back into Saul and his sons, his sons wasn't put to death for his sins, for his sin, in which are his sins. Because the Lord knoweth your sins every lifetime, right? So, he, uh, uh, what did it say back in Deuteronomy again? Visiting the iniquities, right? Of the fathers unto the third and fourth generations, right? So that's when he said, hey, I'm going to put Saul's sons to death. And I'm going to put Saul to death because I remember their iniquities from way back when. It's the Lord of hosts that you're dealing with, man. Controller of all. All things will be his will. Sirach 18, verse 3. Okay? So going back into this, fathers not should be put to death for children, and children should be put to death for the fathers. Every man should be put to death for his own sin. Clear to the point, okay? Every man should be put to death for his own sin, right? So, when you look at Saul's sons and Saul in that situation, they didn't go to hell, first of all. They went back onto the Most High, the Spirit. Remember, the dust returned to the earth, and the Spirit returned back onto the Most High who gave it, Okay? He lead it down the hill and bring it back up again, right? The dust shall return to the earth and the spirit shall return up back on to who? The one that gave it, right? Now let's go into, uh, back into reincarnation again. Well, the whole topic's about it, but why would you, how should I say this? Why would he, uh, Titus chapter 1 says, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. I'm going to get the point right here, okay? Matthew 16 and 13. When Yahweh came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I 
that I the Son of Man am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter said, And Peter answered and said, Thou art Hamashiach, the son of the living God. And Yahweh answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto, unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Now why would, he, why would Yahweh answer that if, if reincarnation was not real? Why he would have stopped him right there and said, Hey, what the hell? What you talking about? They some say uh, Jeremiah, some say he, he would have stopped him right there. He'd be like, Look, I gotta rebuke guys sharply. What the hell are you guys talking about? You know, what the hell are you guys talking about? In fact, they would have just went straight to the point. Thou the one that is prophesied to come, the Son of the Most High, Hamashiach. They would have just went straight to the point. But he asked them. Who do men say that, that I am, right? And, he, and they said, well, some say, you know, um, Jeremiah, Elijah, right? Who was uh, um, John the Baptist, right? So right off the bat, that type of thinking goes into what? Reincarnation, right? Jeremiah's gone. Elijah is gone. You know, so what the hell? Why would they mention prophet or and the because it says too, or of one of the prophets, right? Why would they mention passed away prophets, prophets that have passed away? So they had to know in their mind about reincarnation, and like I said, Yahweh would have stomped them out right there, he would have stomped that whole fire out right there, even like stop. Why are you guys speaking like you're speaking of reincarnation? <laughs> you would have stopped them right there, man. Think about it. Me and you were having a conversation. And I say, who, who the men say I am? And all of a sudden, you start talking about James Brown, uh, Nat Turner, Nat Cole, this, that, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, what the fuck? Hey, hold up. Those guys are dead, yo. What are your ass going on here? We, we, reincarnation? And that conversation right there is a conversation of reincarnation. And Yahushai didn't stop them. He didn't go, hey, man, you going off. You know? He didn't say none of that to them. You know? But here it is. These people out in this world, they don't get it. They don't have no understanding. They have no fucking clue. Okay? But the disciples, Yahushai, you know, men of that time, they knew. But now in this time, you know, as Matthew chapter 16 and 14 says, you know, a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. You know, they would like somebody here, if re you know, like in their mind, if reincarnation is real, well, I would like somebody here to uh, tell me about my past or tell me about so-and-so or, you get what I'm trying to say? You know, and, and hey, there's instances where kids come back and they show people where they died Showed in their grave, told them what happened to him. I got hit in the face with an axe. This guy shot me in my face, this and that. And, hey, murders have been solved like that. <laughs> Believe it or not, man. When they actually go and study into it and look into it and the kid starts telling them clues and this and that, where the body's buried and, oh, man, my best friend did it. His name is this and that. Then they go and, 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 and you know, question the person. They give up. Because the, the facts are too 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 heavy and it's been on their mind too long and most high gives them that spirit to give up and unsolved mystery solved. Damn. <laughs> Anyways, Second Maccabee chapter six and verse twenty six for for though for the present time I should be delivered from the punishment of men, yet should I not escape the hand of the Almighty. Neither alive nor dead. Why? Because on to the third and fourth generation, the Lord could pop you back up and put those iniquities, you know, ladle you heavy. 
going back into Saul's sons, okay, and Saul, okay, and us too, you know, just because you escaped, you know, like, people like to say that Esau, Edom, he escaped, all those guys, they escaped, no, man, did we not just read the scripture, because at one particular time, this show here is going to come to an end, this movie, uh, Second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 9. This movie is going to come to an end. Okay? And Esau Edom is not going to escape with all the shit that he has done to us. Okay? He's not going to escape. Because as in Baruch 4 and 25 tell you that, you know, we're going to get that last laugh on him. We're going to have our foot upon his neck. All right? So there ain't no need to be like, oh, yeah, you know, um, whatchamacallit. You know, this guy look at? Gross. Yeah, ain't no need to be like uh, a camp. This brother, you want to knock the seed him right out. And I told him, hey, man, we gonna, we gonna have our foot upon their necks, man, soon enough. Suffer patiently that wrath that has come upon thee from the most high, you know? So... Some of you may look at these Edomites and go, they escaped the hand of punishment of man, you know, and went into heaven. Look how look how long they get to live in this night. Nah, man, you're not going to escape, neither alive nor dead, because the Most High, eventually, this show comes to an end, you Edomites in chains around your fucking neck. And all you individuals who've been ripping off people and doing dirt to people, you're going to get yours, man. Okay? You're going to get yours. Nobody escapes. Psalms chapter, uh, exactly, Psalms chapter 68 and verse 20. He that is our power is the power of salvation. And unto Yahweh power, Yahweh, the Lord, the Lord begin, belong the issues from death, okay? And unto God, the Lord belong, shouldn't I say belong, belong the issues from death. So the Most High know when to put you, can put you, it is up to him, put you out, okay? Out and gone. Out your candles, they say, right? And he knows when to bring you back, put you back into, uh, you know, life and death is in his hand, okay? So the issues of life and death cometh from him, man. You know, not these other people. Not, not because you see a man in the world and you think, oh, this dude put me to death. He was the one. No, no, no. The Most High is the one that's going to put you to death when he feels to put you to death. Okay? And that's also in uh, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter... Um, 1 Samuel chapter... Um, fuck. Let me get it real, real quick. 1 Samuel. Yep. First Samuel chapter two. Oh fuck. Ah, lock in. First Samuel chapter two and uh six. He all killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. Okay? So bring it down and bring it up. He killeth a lot he killeth and maketh alive. You get the point. Okay? It, those issues belongeth unto him. Alright? So going back into this, uh, Ezekiel 18 and 20, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteousness, the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Okay, so whoever is righteous is righteous, and whoever is wicked is wicked, right? And guess what? The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, and the father shall not bear the iniquity of the son. So when you're going back into Deuteronomy, some people may say, well, there's a contradiction right there. See, I told you that Bible's mixed up. See, see, start at the beginning of the video again. Listen to what he said. Yeah, you are your forefathers coming back. That's why it says, let me see, here. pop that, put this up. Visiting the iniquities of the fathers... 
upon the children unto the third and fourth generation because you are your forefathers coming back to live in those third and fourth generations. And the Most High keepeth your sin in the mind. And you say, well, don't think that that exact what happened with uh, Jonathan, his father, you know, and his brothers, right? It's put to death for the things that whatever they did in the past life, the, the Most High still got that chart, okay? And then in this part of the movie, he said, okay, they're popping up here. I'm going to make their father go off, and this is what's going to happen. It's simple. It's not It's not even hard, man. Second Ezra, chapter 16, and verse 63. Surely you note your inventions and what you think in your hearts, even them that sin and would hide their sin. Therefore the Lord have therefore have the Lord exactly searched out all your works, and he will put you all to shame. And when your sins are brought forth, ye will be ashamed before men, and your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. What will what will ye do, or how will ye hide your sins before God and then it, and his angels, right? Because the Most High has his angels in every uh, spot, okay? You think because it just says the angels of the Lord encampeth around them that fear them? You think, you think that the Lord, had, that, look, when you go into Job, it tells you in your sleep, deep sleep, that these angels come and, and, and send those messages upon you, man. You know? And then the next day you get up, and man is withdrawn from his purpose, that thing that you thought out, you could, you know, the day you were sitting there, you're like, I'm going to go to the supermarket tomorrow, and I'm going to go build this too. Well, guess what? The Most High would draw you from your purpose so that he fulfills his will, okay? So you may be thinking something in your head, but even that's controlled. <laughs> and how are all these things found out? Because the Most High has his angels everywhere, man. See, you're in a trick bag, you're in a, you're in a movie script, and you don't understand that you have no free will. You're just playing out your movie, okay? You're just a, a, a spirit that comes into a vessel, the vessel lives out, you feel all that pain, you feel all that hell, you feel all that judgment, the scourges, and then you die and you go back, as Job, you know, will say, place where the where, where the wicked and and you know they don't trouble each other and ray, 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 you know that's it it's not hard to understand man and your sins how the most high know your sins well, first of all you've written written it that way and second of all the angels are right there watching you and they bring it forth before the most high you know you don't you don't know some things that you say speak out into existence as they would say the angels hear it and send it back to the most high like, you know, let's just say you out there and you walk around, somebody bumps into you, they don't look back, but you get like 10 feet away from them and you go, motherfucker, I wish you would try. And you turn around, this guy's looking at you and he, he sends it on. He sends it on even before you fucking even get a chance to turn around and don't even look at the motherfucker no more. You know, guy walks by you and brushes your shoulder. You get like five feet away from her, 10 feet and you're like... You turn around, you're like, I wish a motherfucker would. He didn't even hear you. It's just the most I put that spirit, you know, because you, you want to speak those things in existence. The angels are right there. Boom, boom, boom. You get the action. <laughs> so it's like that, man. Don't think the most High don't hear you. The most High knows what you're up to, okay? Colossians 3 and 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he have done. And there is no respect to a person, is right. So going back into uh, Saul and his sons, right? Moses said, "I don't care. I anybody that's doing wrong, anybody that's doing wickedness, man, anybody that's committed that iniquity, you're on my checklist. To get, I gotta get you back, okay? <laughs> you stepped against me. I gotta get you back. All right." So, Lord, no respect for this person. Look what he did with his son. 
Look how Yahushua was put to death. Look how John the Baptist. Look how all these prophets were put to death. Boom. What? And you got these guys out here talking about their entertainers and people respect them and this and that. Get the fuck out of here, man. Wow. Wow. You know? You don't understand, man. You don't understand, man. The most high path of judgments, eh? Judgments, eh? More of a neat underneath the sun and saw what? The place of judgment, man. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 10. I, Yahweh, search the heart, meaning the mind, and try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So, according to the fruit of your doings, according to your work, according to the workings of your hand, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, passes judgment on you, right? So, it's not the father that's getting judged for the son, or the son's being judged for the father, but those individuals themselves. Okay. Not the father and the son Unless the father and the son was doing something And they did some kind of wickedness Together The most high will still pass judgment You know On them I'm Not going to say that they're, they're sons You know what Let me kill you because your dad Did no. Nah. Let me kill you because I know your, your sins Yo I know what you did in the past. I got your fucking number. Okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and uh, verse 9. The thing that have been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there shall no slack yet. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new. It had been already of old time, which was before us. So, there's nothing new underneath the sun. You. Okay, you underneath the sun, right? Your spirit is underneath the sun, right? <laughs> You living underneath the sun, right? You living here on earth, right? So no. Your tactics, your techniques, but mainly you. Okay? You lived already. Okay? You're an old soul, as they say. And the most high knows all your 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 behavior, man. Knows all your sins. Okay, from day one. From time the first time you make you touch down, as they would say. See? He knows all your works, man, all your sin. There ain't nothing new underneath the sun. Ain't nobody new pop up. All right? There is no remembrance of former things, your life before. Like I was saying before, the Most High don't give you that information. He wipes that information clean, slightly off your mind. And like I said, some individuals, they get to remember it. They go, I remember I died in this forest. Somebody killed me with an axe. They shot me in my back. My name was so-and-so. Look it up. The next thing you know, they look it up. The parents are like, what the fuck does this kid keep talking? Are they, hey, shit, they might even have a birthmark. Because I remember seeing that. The kid had a birthmark on his face. You know, or in their back. or You know what I'm saying? And that's a, the what? Like a marker. You know? It's like a marker, man. But the most I will do it sometimes, you know, yeah. Put you in remembrance of, of how you died or something like that, you know. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. So even now and to come after, you know what I mean? They still don't remember their, their past lives, all right? That's just how it is, man. That's how the most I wants it. That's how the most I made it, all right? Second Maccabee chapter 6 and verse... Oh, I already went through this. Yeah, well, going back into this, for for though, and this is the last scripture, for though for the present time I should be delivered from the punishment of men, yet should I not escape the hand of the Almighty, neither alive nor dead. Now, going back into what I was saying here, anything new on the sun, 
Is it remembrance of the former things? No. Because in your former life, when you're doing wickedness, right? Like I said, all these all these motherfuckers, these old ass Edomites that did all this wickedness and did all this shit to these people. You know, a lot of people look at them and say, this guy just lived a nice life and died, yo. What the fuck? The fuck is this? This guy had slaves. He lived to a hundred and something. He didn't even catch a damn near a, a, a fucking cold. Well, neither alive nor dead. You're not going to escape the hand of the Almighty. Nobody does, okay? There's no one spirit, one soul that, poof, I got out of the way. No. On to the third and fourth generation. The Lord kill you, put you down, bring you back up. And guess what? You might be five years old walking and get mangled by a fucking car. And, hold on, Lord keep you alive, bring you out of it. Now you got to piss in a bag, hop around on one leg. You get to the age of 20-something years old, your, your, your fucking hand gets ripped off by a, by a dog or some shit. Gets terribly ripped off. Okay? So, what the fuck, man? This shit was a crackhead. Little light skin kid, he wanna box his mom up. God damn. Kid's like, let me get my stuff and I'll leave, man. Shit, man. You see, hey. But anyways, hey. Lord deals his cards how he wants to, man. It's his movie. But anyways, hey, you, you ain't gonna escape what the most high has for you. This lifetime and next lifetime, whatever you've done, the Lord keeps it. Like, he got a paper with your name on it. Not virtually, like, not literally a paper. I'm just saying, you know, metaphorically. You got a sheet with your name on it, man, with all your goddamn sins. Everybody, okay? That's why it says that there is none that is righteous. Not one. Because the Most High, he knoweth all your actions, man. Even in this life, some people may live to about... Let's say it this way, too. Even in the 80, 60, they never heard a fly, never fucking squished a bug, you know? Damn near living under the rock, as you say. And then one day they come out, some fucking guys get gang up on a fucking 40-year-old woman, or a 38-year-old woman. She never done nothing. She's always helping people, and they beat her, rape her ass, stab her up, you know, beat her half to death, you know? And then... <laughs> Then then she gets to 80 and the same thing happens to her again. God damn. But what is that? That's the judgment of Yahweh by Shem Shai. And he knoweth your sins. He knoweth every fucking little thing you've done, yo. Because who knows? That lady in the past life, she could have been torturing people. She's been cutting off people's bodies. You know what I mean? Doing all types of wicked shit, right? And then everybody in that lifetime said, hey, man. This woman lived a long, lavish lifestyle, and she never fucking got charged or anything like that. Well, like I said in this scripture here, neither alive nor dead, man. You're, you're not going to escape the punishment of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh man. That's bottom line what it is. Shit, fuck yeah. That's bottom line what it is, man. You know? <laughs> you're not going to escape Yahweh Hashem Yahweh has appointed to you, you know? But hey, man, I don't want to keep this going on so long, you know. But sometimes you got to go in depth, you know. And with that, all praises, all honor, all glory be unto Yahweh. Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem, Rukakodash. Double honors to the apostle elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And peace and salutation to Allah Akim doing and pushing his word in all honesty, truth, and sincerity worldwide. And a sincere shalom to the elect. And shalom to the sincere sisters who listen and follow along. Um, hey, I hope you're edified. Matthew chapter 24 and 13 to you all. Wa abad babal. Shalom.